So now we are going to take a break from the pitches to chat with a very brilliant medical professional whose work focuses on finding the best ways to exploit the power of data to help with some of the world's leading challenges, both from the technical innovation as well as the public policy point of view. So our next guest, Maria Crispin, is a um, Boryasevic Biomedical Sciences Fellow and Research Fellow at the University of Cambridge, a Senior Programme Director at IE School of Global and Public Affairs, and a Computational Group Co-Lead at the Mark Foundation Institute for Integrated Cancer Medicine. Thank you so much for joining us, Mariella. It's great to see you. Or Maria, I beg your pardon. Beg your pardon. Um, so, <laughs> okay. Thank you very much. It's very exciting to be here today. Ah, wonderful. I love the background as well. That's that, that's really nice with the fireplace. And it's, sorry, this is uh, th this can be a little bit voyeuristic. You're getting to see into <laughs> other people's homes, but I love your background. It could literally you could sell that as a Zoom background. It's perfect. Um, a lot of your work revolves around healthcare, artificial intelligence, in particular the creation of machine learning models for cancer and the development of a European framework for healthcare AI integration. And we've been hearing today a lot about digital health in recent months. In your opinion, what's the current situation of AI applied to healthcare from a practical point of view? Yeah, thank you. That, that's a great question. Um, well, there are two key ingredients that have enabled the revolution in, in digital health. At number one, the digitalization of health data, and number two, the arrival of advanced data mining and AI techniques. So we can now automate and even do a better job at some of the tasks that healthcare professionals have traditionally conducted in a qualitative or semi-quantitative way. So the question, as you were saying, is where are we at from a practical point of view? And it's actually something that we were wondering at the Center for the Governance of Change at IE University. And so we recently did a, a study of the status of healthcare AI in Europe. And in one of the papers of our report, uh, what we showed was that uh, digital health innovations are developing across Europe, interestingly, with some countries dominating the landscape, particularly Germany, the Netherlands, the United Kingdom and, and France. So innovation is happening, the advances are very promising, but with some exceptions, a lot of the AI developments have focused on technological upgrades of particular moments of care, so pathology, radiology, as opposed to redesigning care pathways, in other words, improving the way that patients experience care. Mm. And so the, the, the next question would be really, why have we not seen significant changes yet in healthcare? And the answer, as always, is... Um, because there are still important challenges. And there are, first of all, the development challenges. And, and one of the speakers was talking about this just a couple of minutes ago, dealing with data, annotating, curating, sharing data. It is still one of the biggest bottlenecks for most AI applications. Mm -hmm. And we're also becoming more and more aware of the many biases that these algorithms can have. So that's a, that's a huge issue. And then there's also the implementation challenges from addressing skills gaps to understanding the public professional perception and, and finding the best ways of integrating these technologies uh, into the care pathways. But in my opinion, what we need to understand is that it is particularly in, in these challenges um, that the most important opportunities can be found. So, for example, including patients in the design process will not just make sure that AI solutions have maximal impact, but also, it has the potential of making the process more efficient. Uh, it'll help with decision making, and it eventually, you know, it'll, it'll actually empower patients, which is what this is all about: putting patients at the centre of healthcare. I love it, patient-centred healthcare. That, that's fantastic. Hold that thought. Um, just if we could um, kind of just put this in a context: How has the pandemic affected how we're looking at these challenges, uh, in particular, and have we learnt anything through the pandemic? Yeah, another great, very timely question. So I would say that there are two very important learning points. Um, the first one is validate, 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 and validate again, uh, because the, the progress that we have made in regards to AI and digital healthcare in a matter of weeks, months, could have taken years under normal circumstances. 
But this means that you know, the speed at which we have arrived at this point means that it is more important than ever to monitor the advances carefully, to really ensure that patients are receiving the best possible care and to earn the trust of the clinical community and the general public. Avoiding missteps at this time will be critical, not just for the management of the pandemic, but also to ensure the credibility and the future of digital AI-powered healthcare. And this is actually not true only about AI, but also other large-scale data analyses. And we have seen examples of high-impact papers being retracted uh, or test and trace apps being delayed and retired. And this will not be forgotten easily. So we really need to earn that trust. And then the final point, the second and final point, is that there is really a need for open and uh, transparent dialogue. Health challenges do not understand about borders, and particularly across Europe, we have seen in, in our studies that there are differences between the way that different countries approach AI innovation, but there are also many things in, in common. And there are challenges such as questions about data diplomacy or the other questions that we were talking about earlier that can only be solved if we have an open, transparent, inclusive and international conversation. So that's something that I'm very interested in. I think it is really the, the future for this field. Absolutely. Wow. Amen. So I just want to say thank you so much for everything you're doing, Maria. Good luck and Godspeed. And again, that was really fascinating. And um, you know, I, I will leave you to, to repose in that beautiful background. And I, I hope to see you in the real world sometime. Okay. Congratulations for the summit. Wonderful. Thank you.